Um, yeah, is there is there a high end audio company you consider to be the leader of the industry? Uh, there's a company called um, PS Audio, and they're really really good. Uh, <laughs> um, well, you know, I I get I guess I could take the question as also um, what what's maybe like some of my favorite brands, you know, other than PS Audio. I mean, I guess that would be what I would consider a leader in the industry. Um, you know, well, I love audio research. A lot of the stuff they do, um, I've I've had uh, Conrad Johnson stuff that I've really liked before. Um, I think that there's many different areas of the industry in which different companies are excelling. Of course, you know, Rune has done some great stuff on the software side of stuff that they're getting a lot of credit for now that I think is fairly well deserved. They, um, there's um, people like Bruno, stuff like Mola Mola, that is cutting edge in measurements and performance. And I respect that. And I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to, um, you know, amplifier performance and all that. So, so uh, he's certainly a leader in cutting edge measurements. Um, but I, I've really loved, uh, the audio research for me is still, there's a, a soft spot inside of me for some of that, some of that gear. And, um, uh, you know, well, I'm just an audio fan. So I have, I have pieces of gear and models just like everybody here that, you know, I'm, I'm attached to. Um, so uh, we've seen a lot of progress in software and in, you know, measurements and all of that. But when it comes to the musicality part of stuff, it's just new designers on the, on the field making stuff that sounds different and that's cool. So it's not necessarily that they're better, like the stuff that I put out, it's not necessarily that it's better than anything else that's ever been. No, it's, it's that, it's that, you know, I'm just viewing this from a different perspective. I'm trying things that people haven't really tried before. And, and as a result, I'm getting a little bit different product. And I think one of the problems, and this is, you know, I talked a little bit about this when we were putting out the stellar phono stage was that a lot of phono stages are kind of the same thing. Like, a lot of them are the same amp. It's the same like OPA 2134 over and over and over. Maybe it's, uh, maybe they change it up. Maybe it's uh, OPA 1662s. Like, you know, I, I, I won't name names, but yeah, but, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's the same kind of amp that was designed by Texas Instruments, not that company. So are they good or bad? Well, that's up to the listener, but they are very similar. Um, and so it's one of my goals to put out something unique, something with character, something that has a lot of my work into it. And, and that's what's important to me is, is just venturing into maybe something that has a different personality. Uh, PS Audio Sprout was uh, a good attempt uh, to get 20 somethings into hi-fi. Yes, I agree. And, and we, we have so many customers who are very satisfied with their sprouts and it is a great entry uh, point into high-end audio. Um, I, I have a sprout downstairs um, that, I, that I love and I listen to all the time. And it's a musical piece that is, um, is, is worth a, you know, having a little system for. And there's tons of people who have like audiophiles who have bought a sprout for their, their kids even, you know, going to college or, or, or maybe their, their kid's bedroom has a sprout, or it's just somebody who wants to get into hi-fi that doesn't want to spend a lot of money, but have really great performance. Um, all right. Um, does anybody have any other questions? So I got my three, but I wanted to get the club guys to do theirs first, just to be fair. So 
Anybody else in the club got any more questions for uh, Darren? I might have missed it, Darren, but what, do you, what is your personal system right now? I mean, you mentioned what you had as a, as a young, young guy, which awesome. It was incredible. I mean, when I compare it to my teenage system, it's just mind-boggling what you were able to put together at a young age. But what do you use today? Uh, so my speakers, my main set of speakers that I use uh, to voice a lot of my designs uh, are Harbeth uh, 30.2 anniversaries. Um, I am uh, a huge fan of Alan Shaw at Harbeth. Um, I think he's a very talented designer and I love his designs. Um, and so my main set of speakers uh, are the 30.2s. Um, the, the amplifiers, uh, I have uh, almost everything from PS Audio in my system that I'm able to switch between, listen to different stuff on. Um, so uh, I think everything but the 300s, um, which I, I think I might be getting a set soon um, just to make sure I have that covered as well. But I want to understand every product that we make. And so I have most of every product in my system that we that we make, it's very important for me to understand those components so that I know where we are and where we're going. Um, other stuff, uh, VPI, uh, TNT, uh, a Mark V hot rod turntable um, with a 10.5 I arm, and then I'm just I just actually purchased a Kuzma. Uh, four point uh, eleven inch arm uh, cartridges are uh, Ortofon A ninety uh, uh, a Delos uh, Denon one ten uh, Ortofon Super OM forty uh, I had a Soundsmith um, they're pretty good but I got got over it um, and uh, see what else. Uh, direct, direct stream, of course, um, and then prototypes, prototypes for DAX as well. Um, I have DIY equipment. I have DIY speakers that I've made, um, but uh, but you know, I'm just a, I'm just a geek like everybody here in in audio. You know, I, I love I love collecting stuff. I love modding things, putting new caps, new resistors, and in components, and listening to them. Um, so yeah, that's that's what the system is. Oh, cabling is is mostly all DIY cabling. Um, there there are some uh, some questions coming in here. Um, Darren, how are you for time? That that was the, that was my other thing. I'm all I'm I'm fine. Oh, so are, so are we. We just don't want to screw screw up your night. That's that's all. No, I know we we only we booked ninety minutes, but if this goes over, I don't have an issue unless other people in the club have an issue. Cool. Um, so uh, one question is: You like the thirty point twos over the HL five pluses? Um, I do, and I I have a lot of experience with the HL five plus. It's a great speaker, and um, the the uh, low end capability is better on the HL five than the thirty. But the 30 has the, the uh, CSXL tweeter. Um, that is what is the glowing part of the, um, the 30. It's a, it's a really, really fantastic tweeter. And Alan, Alan is really a crossover guy and a cabinet guy. So he, of course, it's a lossy cabinet, um, which means that it kind of flexes with the music. And, and it's very... When, when, when we say that, it, it's, it's very minimal. People, people say, oh, flexing with the music, that's not what you want. Well, it's more so that it's, it's um, internally damped. So it's, it's lossy and then you damp it. So you control the dampening on the cabinet. So the, the, the outcome from that is almost no ringing in the mid range. And so Harvest Sound, they have this um, clarity in the mid band that a lot of designs, especially designs that have um, uh, more rigid cabinets, just don't have. Um, 
And, uh, and I like their sound. I think that a lot of the things that I like about the Harvest speakers are probably Alan's voicing of the crossover. I think he's kind of a master of, of crossovers. Um, so HL5, great speaker. The 30 is what I ended up choosing, and I've listened to a lot of, 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 um, uh, of the HL5 as well. Um, uh, most overrated reviewer, I, I actually don't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually answer with an opposite. I. I love. I love uh, Michael Frammer. <laughs> he's um, in person. He's just so much like Michael Frammer. He's just very uh, genuine person, um, and he's fun to be around. So that's why. That's why I like him. Um, so. Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, any any other questions? All right, let me let me go up with with my three here. Bear with me. All right. So, first question I got is your passion for DIY on the PS Audio forums is obvious, but with your busy schedule, would you ever consider offering any DIY kits, schematics, PCBs, building materials in the future? without stepping on your work at PS Audio? I, I would really love to, um, and I would have to see what the interest is. I've always admired um, Nelson's efforts in, in uh, giving out information and uh, allowing people to um, exert their passion in building an amplifier. And I think that's a really important experience that a lot of people should have. Um, I'd love to, it is a time issue. And right now um, I'm, I'm kind of in a, in a crushing mode of, of just spending a lot of time on designs. And um, right now I'd say that I'm just not, not it's not possible with the schedule, but, uh, but in the future, absolutely. I plan on, I plan on doing that. Okay, so my question number two. Um, so I know you and I discussed this a little bit, so I'll, I'll bring it up again here. Uh, surface mount versus through hole components. Um, I know one thing you and I talked about there was the one beauty with uh, surface mount is you don't have to match components like you had to with the older uh, leaded uh, transistors, FETs, JFETs kind of thing. Uh, yeah. But I Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that um, with that, it more so has to do with uh, the part itself, um, the the manufacturer that's that's producing them. You know, because like some some of them may not be really matched. Like just because it's a SMT part doesn't mean it's going to be really matched. Um, okay. But and and the type of part too, like the whether it's a JFET or a bipolar or a, a MOSFET those kind of vary too. Like it's really hard to get JFETs, you know, uh, matched uh, well without actually going through the, the batches. Um, some are matched more than others. And what they, what they ended up doing is just creating dual parts that are on the same die. Mm, so yeah, I remember. The, both, both sides will have the same uh, characteristics um, versus having separate parts that just don't necessarily have those characteristics. But but uh, I found that if it's a really decent part from a really good manufacturer, that if you get the part in the same batch, that it's in the ballpark. But it depends on the design, how, how close it needs to be for matching. Mm -hmm. And so um, maybe there's more in SMT, but it doesn't, it, it's not necessarily, um, uh, it doesn't mean that they're going to be matched. Absolutely. All right, so my third question is, as a, okay, I'm gonna call you a fellow Canuck, but you're a dual citizen like my son, but at any rate, how the hell did you drive the roads in Montreal? I know you and I talked about this before, but I kind of wanted to end it off there on, from my side. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, I put up <laughs> some time. It's, it's horrible, Montreal's roads are just, they're really, really bad. and. The, the potholes, they, they cover, the, they fill the potholes, um, but then there was some sort of uh, issue in the government where they, they paid off some, you know, some corruption occurred 
and they found out that they were just mixing down the tar. And so, and so the potholes just got even worse the next season. So like, they just can't keep, keep up with it. And so, you know, everybody's suspension is gone and, and tires blow out and it's, it's a, it's a nightmare. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, guys, so no, no other questions for Darren for tonight. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Cause he's been really good with us. Uh, so besides AR, Hardbath and PS Saudia, what are other makers do you feel are working on the, on the, uh, on the right path? Um, let's see, let me, let me think about that for a second. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, and this, this, uh, boils down to maybe even more down to the designer because, you know, I, I used to view it as like the company and then now I view it as, oh, this designer designed this component and, you know, they, approach the design this way. And so again, I, I love, I love Nelson Pass and, and his style. And that translates to, you know, a certain sound that's, that's really unique and different. It's not just one of those manufacturers putting out something that is like a lot of other products. Everything's unique. Everything's well-designed. Um, you have John Curl, who's a very close friend of mine. Um, I've learned so much off of John and I admire his circuit um, uh, style uh, or designing style. And, and, you know, John's the JFET guy, um, complimentary JFETs. Um, that's John. Uh, and what a great designing, unique designing method. I mean, he, he actually uh, invented the, in the JFET uh, uh, complimentary input stage. And he has a very unique style in implementing that. Um, so I like a lot of John's products. Um, Constellation, stuff he's done in Constellation. Bascom and John work together in Constellation. Um, so I, I've, loved, I've loved that stuff and, and, um, and you know, uh, just learning more about their design efforts. And then you put it all together. It's like music. It's like musicians. You know, they listen to their favorite music and their music fans. And then their band that is unique and new is, is just uh, from listening to all these different stuff, all this different stuff. And so in, in order for me to, to make something truly unique and new, I need to learn about the previous guys. And um, there's just so many smart, um, innovative people out there. And, uh, you know, John and Bascom are just, and, and, and Nelson, you know, they're just, uh, they're legends, you know, and so I need to learn from them as much as possible. So I have so much respect for the product. Um, so uh, what was your view on power dats? That's a good question. Um, why are they not more popular? That's, that's a good question. So um, power DAC uh, is going to, uh, the first stage in a power DAC is usually uh, an ADC. So first you must be able to uh, transfer it into digital or maybe you have a digital input. So that would bypass the ADC, but you would have to have an ADC on this board, the first thing. So it'd go analog to digital or your going digital into the power DAC. Yeah. Um, from there, you have to be able to uh, create a PWM uh, that's going to be sent to the, the output stage. And there's, these are, this is generally gonna be like some sort of processor that's gonna uh, process this uh, signal and create a PWM. Um, and from there, it's, it's, a, it's actually a traditional output stage, which is usually like an H-bridge output stage to, a, to an amplifier. Um, and then there's feedback. And the feedback is then going to go through an A to D, because you have analog out on the output of the amp. You go through an A to D, you get digital, and then that's put into the processor. The feedback has to go through this 
analog to digital process to get your feedback back and then compare it in to the input signal. Um, so the first thing I want to touch on with the power DAC is the timing of all that. So you're going to have you're going to have some latency in in the A to D process, which is really minimal. It's usually like less than a millisecond. They're they're quick, um, but then you got to get to the processor and you must process and create a different signal for your feedback in enough time. And at low frequency, that's not a problem. At 20K, it's hard. At 30K, it's harder. And of course, getting to 100 kilohertz, it's just uh, extremely difficult. Um, you must process this really, really quickly. And so this drives up, you must use a really fast processor to do this. Um, and your switch, as your fr switching frequency goes up, um, you introduce other, other problems as well. So, so are, they, are they done? Yes. But the problems are with the amount of feedback and how feedback is done. And I've, I've actually thought about this recently, and I do think that can be done really well, but it's going to be expensive. Um, and the, the analog designs like ICE and Hypex and Purify, they're doing that for a reason. They're using analog for a reason. And one of the, one of the reasons is that you can get really amazing performance um, for uh, not a whole lot of money in the design cost. And so um, the price of the processor and the overall design and the R&D for a power, something like a power DAC that's going to be like a Purify or, or an ICE Edge um, is going to be, I think, very expensive. Um, uh, when is the 20, 2400 okay. coming out? <laughs> when they make me a module for that. So, uh, <clears throat> Let's see, what type of music do you mainly listen to um, to evaluate systems that you're developing? Um, quick uh, is basically all kinds of music, um, but usually kind of like what I'm into at the time. Um, so, you know, I might have, uh, you know, like that 10 or 15 records in the, or, or, or albums in the, in the past two weeks that I've been just kind of like trying to digest. And it will be stuff that I'm into. Um, I do have demo tracks um, here and there, you know, but I'm not really big on that um, because I don't really need that uh, in the sense that it's more so about whether I'm feeling the music. Um, if something's really clinical and like really forward and really bright, it's just going to be kind of obvious on a lot of like really good recordings. You're going to hear that. And and uh, again, I do have a list. I don't even know if I could really reiterate that list or, or tell you what, what those exact demo tracks are without digging for them. But I, um, but I will listen to the music I'm actually in because I'm into listening to music on the stuff that I'm making. Um, I'll probably, more than anything, drag in a previous design, some known quantity, maybe it's a BHK 250, maybe it's a pair of M700s, and listen to what that music sounds on those and then go to my new design. Um, but it has to be something I like. Um, it has to be, you know, real music. It, I'm not really into a lot of, you know, audiophile stuff. Um, I, I want to use my system to listen to the stuff that I want to listen to. And so I do, I do use that. And if I'm feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm really liking what I'm hearing and, and I am engaged in what I'm hearing, then I know that I'm on the right path. And then I can start to look into, you know, sound staging and separation and noise floor. But it has to sound like it's music. Um, you know, when something really is clinical and, and kind of doesn't sound right, it's, it's quite obvious. Hey, Darren, I got a real quick one. I know, we, yep. uh, you know, believe me, the, the fact that we've gone over time and that you're, you know, 
you're cool with it. This is this is awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so your M700s with uh, Maggie LRS or Maggie point sevens, good or bad idea? And this uh, goes so this you're, okay, the point sevens. Okay, so this is this is below the the one point seven, right? Correct. Yeah. The small smaller ones. Yeah. Um, great, great, great idea. Um, Maggie's are, I believe, mostly a resistive load, but they're they're not very sensitive. Um, but their, their impedance is rather benign um, versus frequency, um, but they're, they're not very sensitive, so you need a lot of voltage over the speaker. Um, and then they're, uh, they're very resistive, um, which is a good thing. So, yeah, power, you know? I mean, the, 90s like power, right? Well, the, the thing is, it's, it's not on the radar for this year, but probably next year. Mm -hmm. I got these electrostatic uh, headphones recently, and I love them because great recordings sound even better, and crap recordings sound more crappier, right? <laughs> and so I'm kind of like, okay, so this is like a taste like we were talking about before. Yeah. So now I'm contemplating it, but it's not going to be until, and plus my wife likes how they look, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I like Maggie's, um, and so I, yeah, the the seven hundreds would be great for those. We have a lot of people running Magna pans on on those. Nice. Um, right. All right. Um, any any other questions? Going once, going twice. So, hey, guys, all right, so if we're going to wrap this up, I mean, Darren, dude, thanks a lot, man. I mean, you yeah. and I have been in contact for the last three weeks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this, this went really well. And, you know, again, thanks a lot for doing this with us. Yeah, I, and, I almost want to join for the TED one. Oh, no, 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 no. well, here, like, I'll, send you, I'll send you an invite awesome. for – Absolutely love yeah. to. I mean, TED's – Ted's amazing. Yeah, well, and he, he sent me straight two weeks ago, you know, a one hour phone call with him. And, uh, you know, he, he saw my poor man's way of ex extracting I2S out of my uh, Sony player and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, it's a cheap way of doing it, but it works. You know? <laughs> Thank Thanks. You. Appreciate it. It was really wonderful. Great. Glad, glad you guys enjoyed yeah. it. I, I in second and third, whatever everybody else is saying. I loved it. Thank you so, so much. No problem. Really, really a pleasure to have, have met you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right, well, guys. Um, Go ahead. I might I might see you guys on the on the TED one. I, I would love to just yeah. join in and, and hear him talk, honestly. It I love Ted. Um yeah. all right, oh, well tell uh, how much fun you had. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> as soon as soon as we get off the Zoom, I gotta figure out what the hell happened tonight because figures that the night I'm hosting one of these, my big monitor decided to just the computer turned right off. But I had audio. You guys could see me. I so I pulled out my laptop as a backup. That's why you see two Joe Goswamis up there. So yeah, that's painful right there. No, I had a backup because I was expecting this kind of it, it figures that when I post my first one, that something was going to get screwed up. So I had a backup. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.